are anything that provoke an unhealthy habit. This is especially crucial for people in recovery. You hear about triggers quite often with people who are suffering from alcoholism or a drug addiction. But what you might not have heard is that they're applicable for anyone and everyone who has ever had a bad habit. So all of us. <laughs> overcome by really just establishing their timeline. So learning about when these behaviors occur. If you want to stay away from sugar, write everything down. And whenever you eat sugar, write down the circumstances, write down how you feel in the moment and record other pertinent details. Like a huge trigger for me is watching Netflix. And how I discovered that was I'd write down when I would binge and it was almost 100% of the time when I was watching Netflix. Thinking through this, it was because I wasn't concerned about my personal goals watching something like A Criminal Mind. So, you know, obviously I was concerned with the show. Learn to turn that, you know, if you have a bad habit, you can replace it for another one because habits don't just disappear. They need to be replaced by something else. So if you have a habit on purpose, you know, purposefully replace it with a something you want in your life. One thing I do while I'm watching my, you know, criminal minds is that I'll find something else to do with my hands. So I'll paint my nails or what I'm doing right now is I'm folding laundry. <laughs> And not only does it give me something to do, but I'm being productive while I do it. One thing that I had to become cognizant of was the time trigger. It didn't always make sense in my mind that time could be a trigger, but I realized that at certain times, you know, after meals, I'd want some sweet treat, like a dessert, and also after dinner, in that long time before bed, I would get hungry and of course, you know, I was more tired. My neurons were firing more slowly. So the ability to make a really good decision was also impaired. And what I did to combat that was I started waking up earlier so that I'd go to bed earlier and that wouldn't be an issue. I was noticing, you know, around lunchtime, I would binge eat and I was like, why is this? Well, I looked at, I started recording, you know, when I was eating food. And as it turns out, I wasn't having a big enough breakfast or a snack in between to tide me over. So another trigger was being too hungry. I combat getting too hungry during the day by packing a Lara bar. I'm going to talk about a few of my triggers and what I replace those with. So a big one for me was after meals, wanting dessert, wanting something sweet, wanting a sweet treat, and mentally wanting something more. And what I did was after my meal, I would have a delicious tea. And so I still felt like I was getting that treat. I felt that warmth in your soul, you know, that occurs when you take that first sip of something delicious. And it was also really good for me. So. It allowed the sugar to hit my bloodstream and it allowed me to kind of, it told my body it was done and then it became a habit that would also say, okay, you're done eating. Another that I've talked about previously before in uh, other videos was that I was watching Netflix and binge eating and what I did was I replaced that with at first books and it didn't work very well because in those times that I wanted to watch Netflix I didn't necessarily want to do any um, conscious thinking. And so I replaced that with YouTube fitness vlogs. Another big trigger for me is time. So late at night, I would want to binge. And I combat that by when uh, scheduling, if I have this huge blank space at night, I'll schedule something like a stretch. I'll schedule a little mini workout, not something that'll keep me up at night, but something that I'm doing to remind me of my goals, remind me of my fitness goals, as well as intake goals. I would also make an apple cider vinegar drink, which you guys know I love and it halts of cravings. If I was feeling tired, being tired in general was a really big trigger for me. So if I'm, even if it's the middle of the day, 
and I'm feeling really tired. What I used to do was go and have a something sugary to wake me up and it wasn't even conscious. I realized it when I started writing down all the food I was eating, my behaviors, what I was feeling. And when I was tired, that's when I would also eat those really, really unhealthy foods. And I would even venture out to get them. And what I thought was, okay, first I'm just going to drink some coffee or I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to give my body what it really needs, which is rest. Another trigger, and this I think is for a lot of people, is going out to eat. And why this is, is because when you go out to eat, even if you have the best of intentions, it is an event. In our culture, eating is an event and it's fun and it's meant to you know, have a little, an air of a splurge and a dessert. How I really prepare myself for eating out is by, you know, nowadays going online, predetermine what I'm going to have when I get there. So I know the nutrients that I'm getting, I know how many calories, and I'm there with purpose. And I also order water or coffee. Another trigger for me was when I was in a group and everyone else was having a treat. When everyone else was eating a whole thing of Ben & Jerry's ice cream, you guys know I love ice cream, and I also wanted that. And what I discovered was when everyone's having a treat, you also have a treat, but have a real treat. Have a thing of blueberries or have some strawberries or, you know, have, have a treat that's real for your body. And while you're eating those, also have something like a tea. So you're continually consuming something, but it's not a guilty pleasure. Another huge trigger for me was going to the movies. When I go to the movies, it's an event. I go to the movies, I get a pop, I get a large popcorn, I get some mini Snickers. I love Snickers. I get some mini Snickers. And what I did the last time that I went to the movies was I got skinny pop. I want to do weight loss so that weight loss is not on my radar. Other things are on my radar. I'm enjoying life. I'm holding a kitten. I'm going out and seeing the goats. I'm doing things I enjoy and love and I'm not sitting there hungry, feeling like I'm depriving myself. I feel like I'm feeding myself good foods that in the, at the end of the day make me proud of myself and make me feel good and give me clear skin and long hair and good nails and that sense of accomplishment you get when you're reaching your goals.